And hello, and welcome to the Effortless English Show. This is AJ Hogue. Welcome to episode number two, broadcasting today from Kyoto, Japan. All right, let's get started, shall we? We have people listening、uh, from all over the world, and、uh, I hope you're all having a great day. Hello, it's me, it's AJ. Hi, how are you doing?、Uh, So, I'm broadcasting today from、uh, my apartment in、uh, Kyoto. So, Kyoto. All right, sounds like everything's working. I can get rid of my headphones now. No more headphones necessary. So, let me just check and make sure that we have our broadcast on YouTube working correctly. Seems like things are, let's see, looking, yeah, it looks like everything's working fine. So we are ready to go. So let's start.、Uh, I like to open each、uh, episode by reviewing our,、uh, our mission and our、uh, code, the Effortless English code and the Effortless English mission. So let's start with the code and the mission, shall we?、Um, now, oops, sorry about that. Still getting used to the technology. It's going to take me.、Uh, A few times to get this、uh, going smoothly, but anyway, it'll get better each time. So, code, mission, and values.、Uh, first of all, our code. Our code is simple, it's just the way we act, it's the way we behave with each other. It's kind of our basic, basic, basic rules for effortless English, for our whole effortless English community all over the world. And it's super simple, just three things. Number one, we do the best we can, that means we try our best. It also means we're not perfect. Of course, we make mistakes. Sometimes we have problems. Eh, it, it, it happens, but we just do our best. It's very simple. Number two, the second part of our code we do the right thing. Right? We do the right thing. Everybody, I think everyone in the world basically has an idea of what, the, what is good to do, what is right to do. You know, you're helpful to people, not hurtful. You're kind, not mean. You say nice things, not, you don't insult people. That kind of stuff. It's very simple. And number three, we show each other we care, or we show people we care. And、uh, so it's a positive thing, right? It's not just that we, we're passively nice, but we actually are actively positive. We show, we demonstrate that we care about each other in our community. So that's our code. Our mission, it's really what effortless English is about at a deep level. Of course, at the basic level, effortless English is about learning to speak English powerfully. But that's quite obvious. It's a very obvious part of our mission. But we have a deeper mission as well. It's, it's, it's、uh, I'd say, you know, just as important, maybe more important. And that is to explore new opportunities for growth, to bring confidence, vitality, and happiness to people all over the world, and to boldly go where we have never gone before. And that. Is our mission. And that, you know, that mission is just really what it's not, it's my personal mission in life. And it's also the mission of the company, Effortless English. And it's also the, the mission of our whole community, which includes you.、So、together, we're trying to, you know, to learn. That's what that first part's about explore new opportunities for growth. It's about constantly exploring new things and learning new opportunities to learn, to improve. Bring confidence, vitality, and happiness to people all over the world. That's about contribution, right? It's about making the world better, helping other people feel happier, healthier, and more energetic, and more confident about themselves. And to boldly go where we have never gone before, it's about living life in a bold, fun way, trying new things, being open minded, all of that. Now, finally, we have a set of values. Our first value is devotion to the mission, the mission I just mentioned. Number two is enthusiasm, that energetic excitement for life. Our third is constant and never ending improvement, our third value. Our fourth value, contribution, again, contributing to other people, to our effortless English community, to the world. Number five, self reliance, relying on ourselves, being independent learners as much as we can. Number six, our sixth value, persistence. We don't quit, we don't stop. And number seven, positive leadership. That's especially important for our VIP and ACC members because you, the VIP and ACC members, are really the leaders of our community. So that's our code, our mission, and our values. Let's move forward with the show, shall we?
All right, let's do it. I'm going to check the sound again just because I want to make sure you can hear me. So let me just check the sound. Sounds like it's still working. Very good. I'll keep the headphones on for a few minutes. Um, now, our next segment is simply called, do you know, Effortless English News. <laughs> Effortless English news. It's time for the news. What's happening in Effortless English? What's happening, uh, you know, with me personally? What's happening with our company and the whole Effortless English um, world universe? We might call it uh, because the Effortless English world includes uh, Learn Real English. I'll take that off now. The it includes Learn Real English and Business English conversations also, and uh, some new stuff coming soon. So, what's happening in our world? Well, number one, first news today is we had a vote. We were voting on the nickname for you, for the Effortless English fans. Now, I, I like to use kind of certain special words or specific words to describe different parts of Effortless English. For example, um, I rarely, almost never, call myself a teacher. Occasionally I do, but mostly I call myself a coach. It's a different mindset. It's a, it's a different... Uh, because it communicates a different feeling and a different idea. A coach is someone who motivates you, who um, gives you strategies, who helps you succeed. But, of course, you're the one who actually has to do the playing, has to do the, uh, the, the learning and the improving. So I see my job. A coach is more of a leader. I see teachers just standing there lecturing in school. That's not me. So I use that. When I describe my role in the Effortless English company, I usually use the word director. And uh, I use that word because I think of it like a film director, right? Like someone who is a film director is kind of the artistic leader of a group, a group of artists, a group of actors and crew members. So the director is not just telling everyone what to do. The, the director is a whole team, and he kind of has the big vision for the movie, but then lots of other people are helping and working on it as well. So in the company, I call myself the director for that reason. Well, and then... Our, our kind of paying students, the people who buy our courses, who join our VIP program, for example, or Learn Real English or Power English, I usually call them members. I, I don't usually use the word students. Again, students for me, it's passive. Students sit in a school just waiting for the teacher to tell them what to do. And that's not what we do. So I use the word members because when you buy one of our courses, you become a member of our you know, kind of inner community, the inner circle of our community. You make a bigger commitment when you buy one of our courses. You show that you're serious. You show that you believe in our code and our values and our mission. And uh, so you're a member of our club, the Effortless English Club, you know, Effortless English Community. Well, finally, I, I, I felt like I needed, we needed one more word to describe the millions of people in the world who um, have not bought one of our courses yet, but who are still fans. They still love Effortless English. Watch, they watch the Effortless English show, they, they follow me on Twitter or on Facebook, they come to live events, uh, and you know, in the future, I'm, I'm sure many uh, fans will buy one of our courses and become full members. So I wanted to, uh, but I wanted to think of, you know, a word for that, and I've, I've been saying fans, fans, fans for a while. But I thought, oh, let's come up with a different word, again, that has a, a maybe a little bit different feeling to it than just fan, because again, fan for me is a little passive. It means you're excited, which is great. But um, I felt like we needed another word. So we had a vote, and uh, we had a bunch of different suggestions. And then we had a, one first vote, and then we chose the top two. The top two were crew and family. And then uh, we had another vote with just the top two. And uh, let me, uh, s let's check the final results, because this is the final results now. Crew was winning quite a lot, and I'm guessing crew is still winning, but I'm going to check. The final results now on the web page. One second. <laughs> checking, checking, checking. Logging in to my little thing here. Okay, polls. Here we go. And the final results are... <laughs> okay, here we go. The final results. Family with 78 votes, 44%. And crew with 100 votes, 56%. Crew is the winner. So that's going to be the um, 
nickname I'll use for our fans. So when I say crew, what I'm talking about, crew just includes everybody in our community. So it's, it's the most general term. So crew includes, you know, people who are working with our company, uh, it includes members who have joined our courses, and it just includes fans who've just learned about us and maybe they have not bought a course yet. So that whole thing, crew. Hmm. I'm surprised by this result. I thought family was going to win, honestly, uh, but I was wrong. Uh, let's talk about this word crew a little bit and what it means, because uh, if we're going to use this word, I think we should talk about the meaning of it and why we're using it. Why not just say fans? There's some things I like about this word crew. Now, when I think of the word crew, I think of two different situations, and I like both of them for describing you, the Effortless English fans. One, I think of um, a movie crew. I'll talk about movies in a minute, more about the news, but uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting into filmmaking and making videos. I've already worked on one live video, and I'm writing another one now. And... Uh, you know, in uh, in filmmaking, in Hollywood, in anywhere where film or film or, or movies or TV are made, uh, you usually have uh, two major groups that make a movie. One is the cast. Cast, that means the actors. And then everybody else working on the movie, especially the technical artists, are called the crew. So a movie crew includes the photographer, the, the, the person who, you know, does the camera. Uh, the movie crew includes the lighting person who fixes the lights and adjusts the lights. Includes the costume designer who makes the clothes or designs the clothes. Uh, includes the sound people who help with the sound so that the sound is good. Uh, basically includes everybody on, that's kind of behind the camera working to make the movie. And, of course, the crew works with the director. The director is kind of the leader of the crew and the cast. So it kind of fits, fits because I've been calling myself, you know, director of Effortless English. And so that kind of, uh, kind of fits. One of the things I like about this word crew that you have chosen is that um, it's, it's an active word. Like I said, uh, one thing I didn't like about fans is it, it's a little bit passive to me. You know, it means you love somebody and that's wonderful, but Fans typically don't do much. They just kind of, yay, you know. But a crew, they they actively do things. They actively work. You know, um, a crew working on a movie, for example, that whole movie crew, together with the director, they're working on an artistic mission. They have a mission, which is to make this movie. And they all have to work together. Everyone's adding their own creativity. Everyone adding their own skills. Everyone adding their own role. Working with the director, everyone working to help this mission. And I see that as your role also. That as fans of Effortless English, as the Effortless English crew, you're not just passive. You are actively working to help the Effortless English mission. Cool. The second thing I think about when I think of the word crew is, a, is the crew of a ship. Like a, like a big Navy ship, you know, in the, in the water. Or if you're a Star Trek fan like me, <laughs> or a sci science fiction fan, you know, maybe a starship, you know? I always think of, like, the starship, the Star Trek starship. And so, again, the, the ship would have the captain, and then everybody else is, would be called the crew, the crew of the ship. And what does the crew do? Well, they do all the work on the ship that's necessary to help the ship complete its mission. Again, working with the captain all together, the whole crew with the captain and the officers, you know, that are the captain's top people, and everybody working together to on this mission, whatever the mission of the ship is. So again, it has this idea of a group of people actively working together for a bigger mission. So that's why I like the word you've chosen, crew. So Effortless English Crew, that's you. Hello, welcome, and uh, I would like you to live up to that name. To, to really be that name, crew, Effortless English crew, meaning be active about the Effortless English mission. Yes, tell your friends and family about Effortless English, but also live the code, live the values, and be a leader in our community. Help other people. So, there you go. Effortless English crew is the winner. What other news do we have? Let me check my notes here. Um, okay, yeah, very quickly, because I don't want to fall behind here. We're on a tight schedule. 
Um, other news is, as I mentioned, I'm working on uh, two two videos, two movies, kind of right now. Uh, the first it will be called, at least the title right now is called AJ Live. AJ, that's me. Live meaning uh, I did a live event, a big live event in Vietnam, and uh, we videotaped it. So I started editing that. Finally, I've been procrastinating and I've been waiting to do it. Finally, I've started editing it. I've edited uh, three scenes now, rough edited. And uh, this movie will have two parts. Now, the, the first part is before the event starts. And that part has um, a lot of planned shots. In other words, um, I was doing most of it by myself. I would set the camera up on a tripod and then I would film myself doing things. And I wanted to show you, you know, what my life was like six months before the event started, because my life was actually not so great then. I was kind of burned out uh, physically, kind of weak, uh, feeling a little bit sickly. I'd been traveling and traveling and traveling too much, and I was really tired and just not motivated. So I wanted you to, to see some of that. Um, but I had to plan those shots because I was doing it by myself mostly. So I wasn't really acting, but uh, those shots were planned. Um, and so you'll see a bunch of plan shots, kind of showing my preparation and my mostly showing my feelings and my thinking before the event, before I went to Vietnam to do the event. And that'll be the first part of the movie. And the second part of the movie is live. It was shot live. My cousin, Philip, uh, joined me in Vietnam. He, uh, he shot an in a couple interviews with me, but then mostly he... He showed us going out to dinner with the hosts in Vietnam. He showed some of the preparation before the big event started. And then he got video of almost all of the, the event, which was, uh, well, the event was six hours. This movie will not be six hours long. Uh, but uh, I'm going to cut out and, you know, keep the best parts and, uh, and then put them all together. And that'll be the AJ Live video. So you'll get to see a little bit of, like, behind the scenes, like what my life was like for Effortless English before the live event. You get to see kind of what I do to prepare for a live event. And then you'll get to see actual footage, actual video from one of my big live events and see what it's like since not everybody can come to one in person. So that's the first big project I'm working on. Second big film project I'm working on, uh, I'm just writing. So I'm planning to shoot a movie this summer with actors. It'll be a fiction story. And then I'll use the movie technique to make a course to go with it. So you can learn from a movie, and uh, it'll be a movie that I write and uh, shoot. So I'm just in the middle of just not in the middle. <laughs> I'm just the beginning of writing that script. So not much to tell you about that yet, except that writing can be tough. Okay, let's move on, shall we, to our next segment? Okay. Our next segment I'm going to call for now. I'm calling it uh, Effortless English Success Story. Stories, perhaps. And uh, now, since I'm just starting, this is only our second episode. Uh, I don't have any guests yet, but in the future, I will invite guests to uh, like a, kind of like a talk show. So we can using this uh, YouTube Google thing, I can have people join me and I can interview them for a few minutes. So I plan to interview some of our VIP members, people who have had good success with Effortless English, who are doing well, who have improved their English a lot. And uh, they can talk about how they did it. And then you can learn from them. You can learn study habits or attitudes or whatever um, from these different uh, members. So today I don't have a guest live, but I'm going to invite a couple, some guests soon. So possibly next week I can get uh, one of our VIP members as a guest on here live uh, and interview them for about 10 minutes. And uh, since I don't have a guest, I just want to talk about a couple of our top members, I would say, the top leaders in our community. And I really want to pick out two people, um, and I mentioned them yesterday during a, a VIP teleseminar, and that's uh, Julia and Verbel. And uh, Julia's from Italy, Verbel's from Germany. And they're both long-time, um, certainly long-time Effortless English members, and also long-time VIP members. And, you know, their English has improved a lot. They're, they're very confident English speakers now, certainly. Uh, but I think uh, even more than that, they have become very uh, positive leaders in our community, in our family, if you will. We'll still use the word family a little bit. It's okay. Um, 
And you know, you you if you get on Twitter, get, get follow me on Twitter. You'll you'll see them on Twitter. I, I retweet them a lot, or I reply to them a lot, and uh, they reply to my followers many times. If people ask questions, uh, sometimes they will answer the questions before I do because I might skip a day on Twitter or something. So um, that's been really great. And they 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 answer questions. They give encouragement to people. So I definitely want to get uh, Verbell on this show and interview her one time, and I want to get uh, Julia on this show and interview her once, or more than once, possibly, and uh, just talk to them about, first off, how they improve their English, and then once they had done that quite a lot, also then uh, maybe in another show I could ask talk to them more about specifically leadership and how they have become leaders in our community. So, so Thank you very much to Barbell and to Julia. Anyone on our uh, forums or, <laughs> you know, you'll see them on my Facebook page sometimes. You definitely see them on Twitter. If you're a VIP member, you see them on our social site a lot. Uh, VIP members all know these two people. Uh, and we have a lot of other great VIP members too, and ACC, which is the same program. And uh, I'll be interviewing uh, more of them as well in this segment, this uh, uh, success segment. So that's Effortless English Success Stories. Um, so, as I said, we'll, we'll do more of this uh, when the time comes. Uh, maybe next week I can get one of them uh, on this show. It'd be kind of cool. All right, so this next segment we'll call My Travels. Uh, in this next segment, it's going to vary uh, in the show. Uh, it'll depend uh, just on, uh, you know, what, what's going on this, this week. Uh, sometimes I'll have... Uh, a story to tell you just about my travels. This is a this is the, the segment kind of in the middle here of the show, where I just am going to talk about um, all kinds of different things, not just English. You know, this, we'll be using English the whole time, but the topic of English learning gets a little boring eventually, right? I'm just talking about it. Let's actually do it. Let's talk. So I'll, one thing I'm going to do, I'll tell stories, tell you some travel stories from my life, just for something different, different topic, and. Um, I'm also going to have a guest, a native speaker guests on this show, again, like a talk show. And uh, mostly it'll be my family and my friends. I'm not going to talk to them about English, probably. I'm just going to talk to them about their life. But you'll get to hear me having a conversation with my mom or my sister or my dad or, you know, my best friends uh, or, some, or other friends, you know, who knows, maybe I'll bring on some expert uh, language learners or teachers or something eventually, but in the beginning, I just want to talk to regular people and like my family. So, but that's a little more difficult for me to schedule because they're all in America and I'm in Japan right now. The time difference uh, is a little tough right now. It's very early in the morning in the United States, so uh, we'll wait and see about that. Today, I'm just going to tell tell you a little bit of uh, kind of travel story. Let me before I do, let me check the audio again. All right, good. Audio's still working. So, travel story. I'm going to tell you about one of my hobbies, actually, travel story. So, um, as you know, I kind of live a international life of adventure a little bit. Um, I travel the world all the time. I love traveling, and uh, I love being active and doing active things and trying new things. And I think that's one of the great things about learning English is that it gives you uh, a better travel experience and gives you an opportunity to do more travel and to enjoy travel more. Because with English, you can travel most parts of the world and communicate at least a little bit with people. And there's really no other language in the world that gives you the same amount of, <laughs> you know, world communication ability. And I'm lucky because I was born in an English-speaking country, so I learned it when I was a baby, when it was painless. <laughs> so uh, I take advantage of this, though. I take advantage of this opportunity and uh, try to use it a lot. And uh, recently, what I've been really focusing on are some outdoor activities, specifically kite surfing and snowboarding, two of my new hobbies. And I started, um, the first one I started was kite surfing. And I did that when my uh, wife and I uh, went and spent about half a year on uh, a Hawaiian island, the island of Maui which is in Hawaii. And uh, we moved there just to relax and enjoy Hawaii. <laughs> it's a beautiful tropical island. It's a wonderful place. And when we got there, I wanted to try something. Everybody in Hawaii, it seemed, 
did some kind of ocean sport, outdoor sport. Now, lots of people surfed, or they, they, they were fishing, or they were scuba diving, which I also do, but um, lots of lots and lots of sports, ocean sports, outdoor sports. Well, in Maui, one of the most uh, popular sports are wind surfing sports, uh, kite surfing and wind surfing. And what's, what, is, what is the difference between those two? Kite surfing is when you are in the ocean and you have like a parachute. It looks like a parachute. So it's a big, like this, right? And then it has, you know, the strings. And the strings come and they, you, they tie on your body, like to a belt around your body. So what happens is the, the wind catches the parachute and it pulls your body. And then on your feet, you have a board. It looks like a snowboard. So the wind pulls you. And you have a bar that you hold and you control the kite like this. So you use the wind. The wind pulls the kite. Which looks like a, it looks, the kite looks like a uh, parachute. It pulls that, and then the kite pulls you through the water. And you use the board, and you surf around on the waves, and it's really fun. It took me a long time to learn. I had a lot, a lot of lessons and a lot of unpleasant experiences while I was learning. A lot of times being having this very powerful parachute pulling my face through the water, bleh, swallowing water, <laughs> falling down, <laughs> flying through the air and hitting the water really hard, all kinds of uh, tough experiences. And I thought about quitting several times, but I didn't. And finally, I learned to do it. And now I love it. It's so much fun. It's great. However, after that six-month period, we, we left Hawaii, sadly. <laughs> there are several reasons why we left I won't talk about now, but... Um, Anyway, we moved to uh, Japan then, where I am now, Kyoto, Japan. And sadly, there's not much kite surfing in Japan, not much good kite surfing in Japan. The water's cold and yucky and eh. So no kite surfing for me, kind of sad. So I, I was kind of kind of uh, bummed. Bummed means uh, depressed or upset. Bummed about not being able to kite surf because I love being just outdoors and active, kind of adventurous, fun. So, you know, I started thinking and thinking. And then last winter, we were in Japan and uh, it was cold and gray. And, uh, I was getting really depressed. I hate winter. I hate it. I hate it. Dark, short days. I get, I get kind of low energy, low motivation in the winter. I don't like it. So I uh, started thinking and I was like, you know, I, I just need to do something active. I need to do something like uh, kite surfing, and then I thought, well, I could go snowboarding because it's the same kind of board, very similar to kite surfing. So I thought, well, maybe I could learn snowboarding quite easily because of that. So my wife and I went to Hokkaido, which is the most north island in Japan. And they get lots of snow. It's fantastic skiing, fantastic snowboarding. And uh, I took a lesson. We both took lessons for half a half day. My wife hated it. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> but I loved it, and, and, it, and it, uh, it was easy for me because uh, I already could kite surf. Snowboarding was much easier than kite surfing, much, much, much easier. After learning to kite surf, learning to snowboard was nothing, super easy. So in a, in a I don't know, in less than a day, I learned to uh, snowboard, and ah, oh, fantastic. I loved it. I just loved being up on the mountain, and the snow is coming down. It's so beautiful, and you know, I know a lot of people, uh, certainly maybe in Europe, uh, and parts of the United States and, and other places that are cold with mountains. Uh, you, you know, a lot, there might be a lot of skiers out there and snowboarders, and it's wonderful. You know what I mean. It's just to be out there in that, you know, just fresh nature and the snow. It's so beautiful. And, uh, and then just doing it is fun, too. You know, you're kind of a little bit fast. I'm not very good, but uh, I just love, you know, being on the board. It's, it, it was fantastic. I loved it. So, um I added that as a new hobby, and uh, I haven't been snowboarding. I mean, I haven't been kite surfing this year, unfortunately. But uh, I do plan to go snowboarding this month, uh, probably uh, maybe next week, maybe in a week or two. I'm gonna go. Yeah, go up to the mountains and again up in the northern, up, up somewhere into northern Japan. Japan has a lot of good skiing and snowboarding, so I'm, I'm in a good place for that. So instead of complaining about the cold, I'm going to just go have fun and enjoy it. So anyway, that's my uh, my little uh, story <laughs> for today's episode: <laughs> snowboarding and kite surfing. <laughs> All righty, and now probably your favorite segment. We're gonna call this question time. Okay, question time. Now, question time is 
as you might guess, if you had to guess, what would you think that would mean? It means it's when I answer your questions. All right, so where do I answer your questions? Well, I answer them on Twitter. 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 Okay, let's see. Go to Twitter. So if you want to send me a question now, you can on Twitter. And what I do is I pick some of them and read them, and then I answer the questions. Now, first, let, let me say the obvious. Um, there are many, 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 many people <laughs> watching this now. And uh, a lot of people send me questions. No, no, no. So as I'm looking at Twitter, you know, the questions are just coming in, coming in, coming in. And uh, too many for me to read uh, immediately and too many for me to answer all of them. So it's not possible for me to answer all. So I just will scan them and pick out ones I like or that look interesting or uh, that I think would be useful to a lot of people. That might be a common question or something that would be helpful to a lot of people. And then I'll answer them. So right now you can start sending my, me questions on Twitter. So my Twitter is uh, twitter.com slash AJHogue, A-J-H-O-G-E. That's my name. So no dots in the, in the Twitter name, just A-J-H-O-G-E. AJHogue is my Twitter. So just send a, a, a comment to at AJHogue, and then I'll answer the question. So let me look. Oh, my God, so many. Okay, let me just scan. Oh, my Lord. Okay, let's see. Uh, da, 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 let me find one. Okay, question. Sorry, just looking. Okay. Okay, thank you. Your best teacher. Okay, it's lots of nice comments. Thank you so much. Send a question if you have one on Twitter now. Okay, I have a question. I want you to answer it on the show. I'll give a presentation next week. That's a good question. So this is from uh, Twitter. Name is B N B N M O U A D. Um, so it says, "I'm skipping school right now. I believe to watch this show. Good job. All right. So uh, the question is this. Uh, I have a question, and I want you to answer it on the show. Here we are. I'll give you. I'll give a presentation the next week." Please tell me the most important strategies to pass this presentation, to do a good job. Um, and then he says, yeah, I'm escaping from school to see your show. Okay, great job. I like the, the, the escaping from school part especially. Okay, so presentations. Now, this is a very big topic. So it's in, in a few minutes, it's, uh, I can't give you a full answer because, in fact, uh, my friend Aaron and I just made a whole course about giving English presentations. So it's, it's a big topic, and it's enough for a whole course. The course will be available uh, February or March, it looks like. We're just getting the website designed now. The course is already finished. So let me give you a short answer to this. The tough part about presentations is the emotion, right? Just the talking part is really the easiest. Uh, it, it's getting the emotion. You know, you get, you, uh, you get that nervousness of and standing in front of people, and when your heart starts beating, this chemical adrenaline comes into your body. Your body makes it, you know, and eh, that's when your heart beats faster and <laughs> your breathing gets going. And then, you know, sometimes you start thinking all these scary thoughts. So what you have to do is you have to take that energy, that nervous energy, and you have to use it. In the beginning, you can't control it, right? So if you, if you just try to ignore it, it won't help. And then you're going to get on the stage and, uh, and, and your throat might get tight and, it, and it's, it's going to be terrible. Your voice will sound weird. So I think the best advice I can give you is to use it is to take that nervousness uh, and use it. Just get yourself really ah, excited, right? So when you start feeling that nervousness, go somewhere alone if you can, or even just sitting there by yourself and uh, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yourself excited. Jump around. Uh, think about imagining the whole audience like, smiling and getting excited. You get uh, enthusiastic more and more. Powerful, powerful. Use your body. Get yourself moving a lot physically. And what that does is it gets that energy moving in your body. Because if, if you try to just hold that energy, that nervousness inside, that's when all the problems happen. you got to get it out. And it's better if you get up and just talk and be really super energetic, maybe too much. That's better than being <gasps> nervous or too nervous. So I recommend practicing this before your speech. So, of course, before you do a presentation or speech, you're going to practice it. And when you're practicing it each day, First, get yourself really, ah, ah, jump around, ah, get excited, do whatever you need to do, play loud, exciting music, get yourself super excited, then start your practice presentation, then start practicing your speech. 
and keep repeating that. Practice it a few times. Then get yourself really excited again, practice your speech again. Then get really excited again, practice your speech again. And soon you train yourself to take the nervousness and change it into excitement. That's my best tip I can give you uh, in just a couple of minutes. Okay, oh my god, so more coming in. Let me see. Let's drink some water. <laughs> I'm guessing this is a joke. Uh, Max Skoro Bogatov says, Will you found, will you start the Effortless English Church one day? <laughs> no, <laughs> I will not. No religion here. Sorry, guys. Um, ah, and then Denise EPL says, I love the explanation for crew as a nickname for Effortless English. Yeah, me too. I like it. So I like the idea, again, that it's active. It's active. Or it's part of, It's an active, skilled team. When I think of the word crew, I think of um, a group of artists or a group of skilled people using their individual skills. Everybody, something different. Everybody contributing to a mission. That's what crew means to me. So I like it. I like it. Okay, let's see. Um, okay. Um, okay, have you ever been, so I get a lot of these questions, so these are just general, these questions I get. Have you ever been to, have you ever been to Kuwait, have you ever been to Russia? So Jill Mani asks, have you ever been to Kuwait? Uh, no, never been to Kuwait. And have you ever been to Russia? BZ Alexon asked me that. Nope, never been to Russia either. And I'd be happy to go to these countries. I just need, um, I need a local professional organizer to organize an event in another country. Because uh, I can't plan all of that. When you see the video, you'll see it was a big event, 3,000 people, lights, a uh, big sound system, you know, a team of volunteers, security guards. That's too big for me to plan from my apartment in another country. So I need a professional group to do that organizing in, or in the location, wherever it is. You know, in, last month it was Vietnam. We have a good group called Langmaster. They're great organizers, and they organized that Hanoi event for me. And then they invite me. And basically how it works is they just pay, pay a fee to me. And I come and I do the event. And then they keep the money from the tickets. So they, you know, they make money from the event. And uh, they, do, they did a really good job organizing. So that's how it works. Um, so I'm happy to do events pretty much anywhere in the world. But the thing is I just have to have a good, reliable, professional organizer to do it. So now in terms of just traveling for fun, I travel for fun all the time all over the place. And... I don't know. Maybe I'll ski in Russia someday. I guess there's no skiing in Kuwait. <laughs> Maybe there's kite surfing in Kuwait, though. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. Wing 4B says, how about talking about the books you've read on this EE show? Um, yeah, doing a little bit of interactive reading, too. That's not a bad idea. Um, I read lots and lots of books. Um, what I do, I, I, I guess my reading approach... Uh, I would call binge reading. <laughs> yeah, it, there's this word binge eating. Usually we use the word binge for eating and uh, or drinking. And uh, binge eating means you eat a lot in a very short time. Usually not healthy stuff, right? So let's say if you do a, like in the holiday time around New Year's, Christmas, that kind of time, uh, a lot of people in America, they binge, they binge eat, they binge on um, like sweet stuff, candy and cookies and cakes, and, arrr, and they eat all this stuff in a very short time. Well, this is what I do with reading. See, what happens with me is I get interested in a topic. Right now it's filmmaking. And when I get interested in a topic, I read every book I can find on that topic. You know, I sometimes read two books in one day. So recently that's what I've been doing with filmmaking. I've been reading books about, you know, screenwriting. I've been reading books about editing. I've been reading books about directing. Uh, how to pay for movies, produce movies, um, all of this stuff. So I'm just, you know, I'm reading probably an average of a book. Uh, well, for a while I was reading, you know, one or two books a day on this topic. And when I get excited, I can read a whole book in a day, just whoo, and on to the next one. This is why the Kindle is, and e-books for me are both uh, wonderful and dangerous. Wonderful because I can read, I can just buy a library of books really fast. I can instantly get all these books which is fantastic. Uh, dangerous because I spend lots of money on books because of this. And it was a great, um, it was a great business idea by Amazon to create that. <laughs> All right. So, um, good question. Go back to Twitter. Ooh, they're coming in fast now. Oh my God. Okay. Um, oh my God. Okay. 
Uh, okay, good. Here, here we go. Uh, Salaysa, uh, S-A-L-A-Y-S-A-1 on Twitter. Uh, says, hi, coach. I tried to learn idioms from movies. Good idea. While watching movies, I pause, and then I write them in my notebook. Is it useful for improving my speaking? What do you think about it? I think that's fantastic. That is uh, exactly what I would recommend. Uh, in fact, that's I'd say movies are probably uh, one of the best, maybe the best, way to learn idioms. Um, so definitely, you know, he, what, what, what he does, I think it's he, he or she, uh, does is they, um, you know, they watch movies, maybe with the English subtitles, and they pause when they don't understand something. And then they look and they find the idiom, and then maybe they get online, find an idiom dictionary, just do a Google search, idiom dictionary, English idiom dictionary. And um, it's a great way to learn English idioms and just to improve your English in general. The only thing I would add is to, which I always say, talk about this when I talk about movies, is don't just watch the whole movie one time. Instead, watch one scene, maybe five minutes, do exactly what this guy's doing, and then rewind and watch the same scene again, and then rewind and watch the same scene again. Watch that same scene 30 times in a week so you learn it very deeply. You're not just, instead of just putting it in a notebook and then trying to memorize from the notebook, that's too difficult. Put it in the notebook and review it, yes, but more importantly, listen to that same scene again and again and again, that same dialogue again and again and again, the same idiom again and again and again. Then you learn it quite deeply through your ears. And then after that, you go to the next scene, the next five minutes, and the next five, slowly going through the entire movie. That's a great way to uh, learn idioms. It's a great way to just improve your uh, everyday spoken English. You can do it with movies. You can do it with CNN or BBC. You can do it with, uh, yeah, anything, any kind of video, any TV show, whatever. The only thing I would say is be careful with comedies, uh, the kinds of movies I would say to avoid. Uh, avoid comedies because comedies are very tough to understand sometimes. Depends on the comedy, but some comedies, uh, there's a lot of cultural stuff. So it's not just idiom. If, if you don't understand the culture or the history, you might not understand what's happening. And then uh, the second kind of movie, would, I would say, is avoid historical movies, like a movie about 500 years ago or about something 1,000 years ago. Avoid that because they might use some really strange language in that um, that's not common today. So, all right. But, but generally, movies are fantastic. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, huh, Denise... EPL also says, please come to Brazil to do an event. Yeah, I want to go to Brazil. So I'd love to go anywhere, honestly. But um, in terms of new countries where I would love to do an event, I, I must admit that Brazil is at the top of the list, number one, simply because we have so many Brazilian members in Effortless English who bought our courses, and so many crew members, so many crew uh, down in uh, Brazil as well. So And just because I travel a lot, I've met a few Brazilians, and they all seem so nice and fun. So I think it the Brazil Brazilian crew and Brazilian audience would really fit my style. It would be a very energetic group of people, kind of like the Vietnam group. And that's the kind of audience I enjoy most, are uh, really enthusiastic ones, very energetic audiences. So someday I'll make it. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. K.R. That Shine. Twitter names are always strange, right? <laughs> K.R. That Shine, Twitter name, says, uh, Hi, it would be cool if you had a radio station that was always active with many stories, interviews, uh, kind of like a radio show. Yeah, that would be cool. That's kind of what this is, really, right? This, I don't know. This is kind of like a uh, video talk show a little bit. Um, that's my idea for this. So, yeah, if some big company wants to pay me, you know, lots of money and help me reach more people. Fantastic. But until then, I'll just uh, do it here on Google and uh, YouTube. And a lot of people still find us. So we, have, we can create our own little TV shows and our own little uh, um, radio shows. You know, this is this. In fact, there's a great book. Here's a book recommendation for you called Be the Media. Be the Media. And this is my approach. So we have now with the internet the ability for each of us in a small way to be our own television station, to be our own radio station, to be our own movie producer. 
And this is what I'm doing with uh, Effortless English. I mean, with this show, this is like my own way of having my own little TV show. Clearly, it's just, it's a zero budget <laughs> TV show. We don't have a set <laughs> in from my apartment on my laptop, but uh, still, you know, that I can uh, broadcast to you all over the world with this. And you can do the same thing about any topic you want. And, you know, we record this, and then we put the audio on our podcast on iTunes, which is kind of like a little radio show. And then I'm, as I told you, I'm already filming videos and movies for you and making courses for those. So it's like our own little Effortless English is like a little small movie producer. Yes, our budgets are tiny, tiny, almost nothing, but still we're able to be our own media. I don't have to wait and pray that some television station will give me a show's probably not going to happen and that's fine because uh, we can do it ourselves so that's my approach so someone contacts me that's great but until then uh, we're doing it this way independently uh, okay okay let's see um, okay here's one 1947 Roswell is the Twitter name how can I help my colleagues to work better I need to influence people um, uh, so I'm a PM and a Beck member. Okay, power, power, and, and uh, Beck is Business English Conversations. It's one of my uh, courses, specifically for Business English. Well, this is tough. You know, this is uh, this this thing. How can you influence other people? So he's saying that you know, at his job, he needs to influence people to be better workers. And this is basically a question about leadership. How can I be a leader? How can I persuade people? And you know, this is a big, big topic. Books and books and books are written about this topic, and uh, no one totally agrees on this. Uh, I think everyone has their own style. So all I can tell you is my style and my approach to leadership. Uh, my approach to leadership is not to tell people what to do directly. I have, I, I have a very indirect uh, leadership style, so I'm not going to... If I'm in a group of people, I don't, you know, you do this, you do that. I don't, I don't like it, and I find it doesn't work. And so I, I try to lead it in two ways. Number one is by example, by being as excellent as I can be myself first, showing an example, and really leading from the front. I think of it as leading from the front. I get out and I do some excellent work. You know, when I was a teacher in school, I just try to do my best, as best as I, I can. And maybe when by doing that, I influence some of the other teachers. I certainly influence the students that way. That's, that's the first thing. Second thing I use to uh, influence people is enthusiasm. I just, I, my approach, if I want people to work better uh, on a team or I want uh, to get people to help me on some project is to just get them excited about it because I'm excited about it, right? So I get people really, I, I just show my excitement. I let all my excitement, my passion come out for the project, for the mission. And then I recruit other people to join me in that by getting them excited too. So instead of them feeling bad, like pressured, like I'm pushing them, it's more that I'm attracting them. I try to attract people with passion and enthusiasm. I don't try to push them by, you know, coercing them. Does that work for all people? No, it does not. But, you know, my attitude is if people, if I can't convince someone with, by being a good example, by getting them excited, by showing them my passion and my excitement, if I can't do that, then in my mind, I'm not going to waste my time on them because uh, it takes too much energy to try to get someone to be better who doesn't really want to. Instead, my idea of leadership is to attract other people who are also passionate and excited. Build a team that way. Build a new team that way. I don't know. It's not always possible in every job, but that's my approach. So I hope that's at least a little bit helpful. Oh, they're coming in fast. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Okay, I'm going to answer one more, and then uh, we're almost done, guys. This one, this hour goes quickly, huh? Okay. Oh, here's a, this is a nice question. I like this. Okay, Anne from Poland is his Twitter name. Hello. Uh, she says, I've read that you can perfectly communicate in English if you learn one, the 1,000 most commonly used words. Is that true? Uh, I can't say if that number exactly is true, 1,000. I mean, it might be 2,000, it might be 4,000, and it might be less. I don't know. But uh, I can say that the idea behind that I, I agree with. Yes, it's true. In other words, you can commu communicate perfectly and powerfully in English with just the most common, most frequently used vocabulary. 
you can you can you can express yourself and communicate powerfully and directly persuasively clearly using simple vocabulary in fact i encourage people to do this i especially encourage this with writing i find i don't know why i guess it's the school system so many english learners when they write in english oh my god they try to use all this complicated vocabulary usually usually using it incorrectly uh, and almost always using it in a very confusing way and so i tell people when they write in english use short sentences simple direct vocabulary common and this is how i write usually direct simple language when i speak that's how i like to speak and you notice that some the, the best public speakers that's how they speak they're direct they're not using oh, all this you know super complex uncommon vocabulary they speak in a, in a plain direct clear way and that is the best way to communicate so is it a, a thousand words i don't know but it's 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 not a lot of words now for listening it's helpful to have passive listening ability and passive vocabulary uh, that's you know quite a bit larger so you understand the words but for actually just using the words in speech you don't need a huge vocabulary but you do need to use those few words very easily and effortlessly so good point and I, I absolutely agree with the idea okay let's see oh, okay so this is a uh, this is a nice question too and I uh, yeah I might have a couple I'll try to answer be quickly and answer a couple more okay Alkiswani Isa, hello, one of our, come, one of our active Twitter followers, um, says, Hi, AJ, why is it easy for me to start a conversation, but I can't go on and on? Love you. Um, I don't know. That sounds, I'm not sure, but um, that sounds like it might be an, an issue that's more social issue rather than English. <coughs> so first question it would be, you know, is do you have this... Uh, problem in, in your language. I have this problem sometimes. You know, I'm actually not um, a chatty person. You know, I, when I'm doing this, obviously I'm talk, I talk a lot when I'm you know, doing uh, effortless English stuff. Because I have a topic, I have something, um, a purpose, reason. But if I go to a party, for example, with a bunch of Americans, um, I'm usually the quiet person in the corner. <laughs> and uh, so I, this, I do this all, you know, I, I do this all the time. I start a conversation with people, but I don't like small talk. I don't like you know, hey, how's the weather? Hey, did you watch that TV show? Yeah, it was really good. I just not, I don't enjoy that. It does it's not very interesting to me. So, uh, so for a lot of times, I might start a conversation and then it, I just kind of, I usually end up just listening mostly. And I don't talk very much in a lot of social situations. Uh, it's just my personality. So, you know, if you're saying you have, it's easy for you to start conversations, but then you can't continue talking and talking. It sounds like you're not saying you have a problem understanding. That's not, that's not a problem. It seems like it's more of a just a personality or a social issue, maybe. Uh, maybe just when you're maybe you feel a little more shy when you're speaking English, or maybe that's just your general personality, like it, like it is mine. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't worry about it. You know, as long as you understand what people are saying and you know they're chatting with you, and you know, just ask questions. So easy. That the trick I use is I just listen. You know, you just look at people and you nod, and you ask them questions occasionally. Most people are happy to just keep talking. <laughs> so you don't actually have to speak that much, and you can, they'll be happy to talk and talk and talk to you. Um, okay, let's see. Um, okay. Let's see. Thank you very much for kind. Can I learn English from songs? Okay, and from Poland again, but uh, I'm going to answer this question because um, it's a common question, and uh, I'll just give my opinion about it. Can you learn English from songs? I was once told that it's useless because you only learn the rhythm and not the language. Uh, yeah, I don't like the idea of learning English from songs, honestly. Um, I like the idea of listening to music. Uh, I think songs could possibly, possibly even help with pronunciation, but learning uh, you know, vocabulary, grammar, speaking ability, no, not really. And, and the reason is you know, songs are poetry. You just have to think of that. Songs are poetry, poetry with music. And therefore, you know, poetry, the language of poetry, is not the language of conversation. It's a very special kind of language. It's not logical, right? Um, you know, many times, even in your own language, you can read a song, and you're not sure what the song is about. You kind of have an idea. Oh, well, I don't know. It feels sad, and I, I understand the words, but what's the whole thing about? I don't know, right? So for that same reason, then trying to do that in English 
and learning from a song, yeah, I would just say, you know, listen to music because you enjoy it, just for pleasure. But if you're going to be, if you, when, when you have time where you want to learn English, you know, your English listening time, I would say don't spend it, don't spend that time listening to English songs, English language songs. Spend it listening to audiobooks, uh, effortless English lessons, of course, uh, you know, using the movie technique, uh, even just reading books. Do those things. They're much more uh, powerful than a song. All right, well, I promised myself I wouldn't go too far over one hour. I'm going to keep this limited so that I can have enough energy to keep doing this every week. So I'm going to answer one more question, and then we're going to finish. Okay, so. Mm, okay, which one shall we go? Okay, here's the one. Oh, that's a nice question. I'm going to answer this one because it's not about uh, English. Uh, so B Z Alexon E L E X O N says, "What are your favorite films and your favorite writers?" Good question. That's kind of a nice question. So uh, my favorite films, I don't, you know, my favorite films and my favorite books change all the time because I'm constantly watching movies and I'm constantly reading books. Um, right now, I would say I, a better way I can answer that is who are my favorite filmmakers, directors, and uh, so there's a few film a few filmmakers that I'm I quite like right now. One, because I like their movies, but also I just like the way they make movies because they're very independent, uh, typically lower budget, so they're not just Hollywood. Uh, one guy's name is Kevin Smith, and if you're not a Kevin Smith fan, you might not even know of this guy. Uh, he made some movie, one of his movies was called Chasing Amy. He made a movie called Clerks, uh, kind of lower budget movies. They're kind of geeky, you know, his, his audience. Uh, the people who like his movies tend to like comic books and like science fiction and stuff like that. Yeah, that's who he is, and that's what he likes, and that's what his audience likes. So it's not I, I like his movies, but I, I more like the way he makes movies because he's making it for his own audience and for himself in a very independent way, not for you know millions and millions of people in Hollywood. So I like it because his movies are very personal. Um, I like Quentin Tarantino. Um, a little violent sometimes, but uh, still overall, I like his approach to movies. Uh, I especially love Kill Bill. Kill Bill is one of my favorite movies, both, Volume 1 and 2. Uh, because uh, Kill Bill reminds me so much of the movies I liked when I was a kid. I loved uh, cowboy movies when I was a kid, like Clint Eastwood movies. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly was my favorite movie as a kid with Clint Eastwood. Ah, I still love that movie. And I loved uh, you know, kind of martial arts samurai movies. Um, and I still do. Uh, so I love... Um, Kira Kurosawa movies, Japanese director. Uh, Yojimbo, it's one of my favorite movies. Sanjuro, it's another great one. Uh, a lot of them star an actor named Toshiro Mifune, or Mifune Toshiro, um, who he was in a lot of great old samurai movies. He's, 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 uh, he died uh, several years ago, but a uh, great actor as well. So. so there you go, some of my favorite films and filmmakers. All right, so... What's our list? Oh, yes. we got one more little segment, uh, and then uh, time to go. Time to go. Which is a Pink Floyd. You ever heard that? Time to go. What song does that? Anyone know? Put on Twitter if you know which Pink Floyd song that comes from. Time to go. Time to go. And I'll, if you get it right, I'll, uh, I don't know, I'll say your name. <laughs> There's no big prize. Sorry. Uh, all right. So continue improving. Continue improving. This is just the part where I want to sum I summarize, you know, what can you do? Uh, first of all, let's talk about effortless English courses. There's some confusion about it because I am uh, owner or part owner in a few different companies, three, soon to be four, and that's why it's a little confusing. First is effortless English, and we have two courses right now, and a third one coming soon, and then a fourth one coming soon. <laughs> so our main one on our homepage, effortlessenglishclub.com is Power English, sold on our homepage. And generally, for most people, I recommend starting with that course, Power English course, sold on our homepage, effortlessenglishclub.com. It's a great course to start with. It kind of, it teaches uh, English, of course, and listening, the whole system that we use. And it also teaches a lot of the psychology principles of effortless English. Which, which are also which are equally important, I feel. So that course overall is just great. Power English, good one to start with. Uh, the next one for Effortless English is uh, 
uh, the VIP program. And that's really for our most motivated, most serious uh, learners. So, because VIP members get new lessons every month. I'm making new lesson sets every month, two full lesson sets every month. Plus, we do a teleseminar where we chat on Skype with our whole group. Um, and they're a little bit, a little more difficult, but also we do a lot of topics about leadership and psychology, continuing at maybe a more advanced level, the ideas of power English. So it's a deeper course. It's really for people who are super motivated about English and about the Effortless English mission. So that's who that's for, VIP. Uh, next is Learn Real English. That's a company and a course that I made with my friends, Kristen and Joe, my best friends, in fact. And uh, that course, Learn Real English, which is at learnrealenglish.com. Learn Real English is more advanced than Power English for most people. It's more difficult, I should say. I don't know if it's advanced, but it's more difficult because it focuses more on casual English. Uh, they're real conversations, they're a little bit faster, and there are more idioms in Learn Real English. So that's a good one. You can combine it with Power English and VIP if you want, or you can do one after the other. Really up to you. And then finally, there, uh, there's a course and a website called Business English Conversations, with an S, businessenglishconversations.com. And as the name implies, those are business English lessons, so specifically focused on business topics, businessenglishconversations.com. And that's a course I made with my father, who uh, he was in business his whole life. Uh, he's retired now. but So we have a bunch of conversations about different uh, business topics. If you're interested in business English, that's a good one, businessenglishconversations.com. And there's more coming, but I'll talk about that when it's closer. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right. My main URL, my main uh, website is EffortlessEnglishClub.com. So EffortlessEnglishClub.com is sort of the headquarters of Effortless English. You can go there. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it's been uh, a great show. I've enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be back again next Sunday with new topics. Hopefully some guests next Sunday. Well, I, I need to try this new feature, this uh, little Google YouTube feature where I can invite guests and then if it works well, you can see my face on half the screen, and you'll see the other person's face on the other half of the screen. And we will have a little conversation. I can interview the guest. I don't know if the technology will work well or not, but uh, I'll try it. We'll see what happens. All right, let me, oh, before we go, let me see if anybody got the Pink Floyd song. Pink Floyd trivia. Did anybody get it? What's the name of the song that says, time to go? Just before the song begins. Time to go, time to go. Bring the boys back home. Nope. But wait, do they say, oh, they might say it before that song too. Bring the boys back home. I'm not sure, but that's not the one I'm thinking of. So that was Julia said, bring the boys back home is the song. Time to go. I'm thinking of Comfortably Numb, actually, the song Comfortably Numb just before Pink goes out on stage. But Julia, you might be right, because they might use that line before the song Bring the Boys Back Home, too. All right, so we'll see. We'll have to check that. Any, uh, Daniel in Brazil, you're a, you're a rock and roller. Uh, you should, uh, check that out for us and let us, let us know on Twitter. <laughs> Which, who was right? Bring the Boys Back Home or Comfortably Numb or both. Or any other big Pink Floyd fans. It's on the album The Wall. All right, enough silly nonsense. I will see you again next week, same time next week, same place here on the website. So, as usual, just remember our code, our mission, and our values. Just the code again, we do our best, we do the right thing, and we show each other we care. Do that on our Twitter account, do that on our Effortless English Facebook, do that on our, on our different forums and social sites. Show other members, other crew, that you care. Just say something nice to them. Encourage people. Be a good person. Show that you care. That's all you need to do. Do it in your own life, too. And our mission, just remember the mission and you know, help us. We're a crew. That means we're a team, an international team. We're working to change English learning. We're in working to change education and independent learning around the world. And we're, we're working together to, you know, to bring confidence, vitality, and happiness to other people. 
So do your part on the internet with other people face to face. Any chance you get to do that. Okay. We're all we're a crew, we're a team now. Let's do that. All right. I will see you next week, same time. Uh, this has been recorded, so the recording will go on to our website, on our blog, EffortlessEnglishClub.com, and on my YouTube channel, which is uh, also YouTube.com slash AJ Hogue, my name. So you can re-watch it again or send a link to your friends if they want to watch it. So, All right. Thank you so much. It's been great. I hope you enjoyed Episode 2 of the Effortless English Show. See you next week, same time, on Sunday. Bye for now. See you again. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.